But Toyota gave this thing some power. That's not even full throttle. Welcome back, I'm Tedward. Welcome to the 2021 RAV4 Prime with 23,753 miles. And welcome to Terminal A at Boston Logan International Airport where I have just dropped off my sister and brother-in-law in their own car. It's a bit filthy and that's okay because this is a daily driver workhorse. And now I have done boxed myself in real good so <laughs> we're gonna pick up in a second when we can actually get out of here but there's oh my god look at that guy's cane there's a real satisfaction to watching people leaving and entering airports because and not like in a love actually way more in a way where i'm like that guy's got rings and an incredible coat and a great hat that is genuine style especially for an airplane I don't want to sound like an old person, but you know, nobody dresses to fly anymore. This guy, this guy's got it. And off we go. All right, so the thing I love about these plug-in hybrids as the RAV4 Prime is, not the RAV4 Hybrid, the RAV4 Hybrid does not plug in, but the idea that you can use these as full electric vehicles is pretty incredible. Airport exit, all right, I don't want to go around and around in circles here. Logan's the worst, by the way, just as a heads up, if you're ever flying in a Logan, it's fine if it's your departure airport or your final destination, but don't, don't connect here. <laughs> Avoid Boston connections. There's like no way to get anywhere. Anyway, it's also, there's no trains or anything into the airport. So it's pretty much the worst designed airport just inherently because it's an old city and Boston was not meant to, to be what it is today. But while we're getting out of the airport, you may notice one safety notification for your vehicle. And there is a recall on the vehicle because for about 16,000 2021 model RAV4 Primes, they are having issues where I guess if you're driving them primarily in EV mode, there is a situation that could erupt where you're asking for more power and it suddenly gives you no power and a sudden loss of power is a very frightening thing to have especially on the highway so we're driving in hv mode which is like hybrid vehicle mode so we're not going to have any trouble we also don't necessarily have enough range on the battery right now to actually uh do anything so anyway we're getting back on the mass pike we're going to get way over in case somebody makes a last minute decision over on the right because that is something that happens quite frequently i know a lot of people complain about massachusetts drivers <laughs> like but if only there were clearly marked lanes boston is all potholes and tunnels baby As a daily driver though, I do find the RAV4 to just be such an exquisite vehicle to drive. It has a little bit of like truckiness to it, like old school SUV feel. It doesn't quite have the handling chops that I typically get out of say like a Honda, like a CRV or a Pilot. Um, those feel like they have like a bit more rigid chassis and they're a little more like floggable. Toyota gives you this little flappy needle over here to tell you what's going on with the powertrain. Essentially saying like, are you using the engine? Are you charging the battery? Are you like driving economically? It's annoying. It almost reminds me of like a, a, a Rolls Royce Phantom where instead of a tachometer, it has a power meter. Bugatti actually does the same thing. I can't believe that that's the only comparison I think I'll ever make a RAV4 against a Rolls Royce or a Bugatti, but it's true. And it is annoying because it's constantly moving because if I'm in a situation where I need to be kind of on and off throttle quite a bit, that, that is moving quite a bit. Um, you know, I'd almost rather just have a tachometer that tells me what's going on with the engine and then just goes to zero when it's using electric power. A small nitpick, but just a thought because it's, it, it's almost distracting. Like I'm just watching it waggle around. Obviously under steady state driving, that's not gonna happen quite as much. But here we have the city, the Prudential Center. This is like the iconic Boston skyline, but it's constantly being added to because the city is building up very quickly, which is just odd to me. All these beautiful brownstones, that's what you think about when you think of Boston. And it's funny because The Last of Us is set in Boston the first few episodes. And the whole idea is they're going west and in like the first or second episode, 
they go 30 miles west and they look to be in the Canadian Rockies and yet I, I pretty much live 30 miles west of Boston so it was pretty funny to see that and realize like hey guys this is just kind of like flat normal ground there's there's no mountains out here The future of automotive transportation seems to be set in stone to look like an electric future. And that is kind of a bummer, man, because I don't know, electric vehicles don't really do everything for me. And it's not even the fact that they're like less emotional cars. It's the fact that they often are impractical. Electric vehicles are pretty great now. You can buy great electric cars that drive well, that are fast, that are fun. Tycons, Rivians, Lucids, these are great cars, but unfortunately the charging network is such that you feel completely screwed on a long trip or if you're going off your normal beaten path. That's very frustrating and this is where I think plug-in hybrids really solve all the range anxiety and do the thing that an electric vehicle needs to do, which is like 95% of your daily driving would be done under electric charge. If you have the, the luxury of being able to charge at home, which most do with a, a plug-in hybrid, otherwise you likely wouldn't be buying one, you're able to charge, and in the RAV4 Prime, for example, this gets a pretty stellar electric range of about 50 miles. And if you're thinking about that as like, you know, oh, well, as an electric car, that sucks. Well, no, because if you, you know, don't live more than 25 miles away from work, you are never going to need to use gas on your daily commute. And then when I've got to go drop someone off at the airport or make a long drive, I don't have to think ahead. I don't have to plan ahead on where I'm going to charge. All I need to do is fill my tank with gas. And then on those rare occasions, great. You know, I'm driving a hybrid that gets 30, 40 miles per gallon. Not a terrible way to live. And I wish that there was more plug-in hybrid uh, available and that it wasn't such like a, a, a specialized thing, you know, like Porsche has plug-in hybrid Cayennes, but they're incredibly expensive and it, it's a bit impractical. What I would love is like a plug-in hybrid Civic. So I could basically get all the benefits of a relatively small Econo car, use it as an EV, but also never have range anxiety or think twice about needing to like figure out where I'm going to charge when I go somewhere on a long trip. But one thing I do love about this RAV4 Prime is it is just such a sort of like mindless vehicle. Um, it's not vague, it's not boring, and I don't mind driving it in traffic. And another giant benefit of these hybrids, even like a regular hybrid, not just a plug-in hybrid, is that you're recuperating energy off throttle. So I, I love that sensation of when I'm braking or when I'm coasting, that I'm actually just helping my fuel economy. I haven't just wasted fuel. Normally, in every other ICE vehicle, you hit the brakes, that's just energy wasted. All you've done is converted that, that kinetic energy, that chemical energy from fuel into heat through the brakes. And that's a complete waste. Whereas at least in a hybrid, when you do hit the brakes, the first bit of braking is going to be regenerating into that battery. And that's gonna help you in the long run. Reliability wise though, this has almost 24,000 miles on it. And you know, that's a big deal because a lot of times when you're watching car reviewers, they are driving a brand new press car. And brand new press cars are great because they're sorted. They've got all the things that the manufacturer wants you to see. However, unless you're dealing with long-term tests from a magazine or consumer reports, you're really not getting the full picture of what reliability looks like. And you have to rely on owners to be YouTubers or hopefully writers to inform you of that kind of stuff. So that's why I'm glad I'm not bringing you like a 1200 mile RAV4 right now. I'm bringing you a 24,000 mile RAV4. And from what I've experienced in the last like hour of driving this car, it's screwed together nice and tight. I do not have any annoying rattles. Yes, there's a little bit of wind noise, but nothing that's not to be expected. There's some other added benefits to a PHEV in addition to just better fuel economy. Number one is torque. I mean, you've got incredible low end torque and 
that those electric motors kick in quickly so that way even though that engine still needs to to rev up you've got instantaneous torque that makes daily driving these so much easier especially in traffic the other thing is range this can go like 600 miles or somewhere in that neighborhood when you've got a full battery and a full tank. That's massive. And today we don't have very many high range vehicles. It's a real bummer. I mean, granted, if you're driving diesels, maybe that's pretty ordinary for you. But a lot of cars, a lot of manufacturers have moved to very small fuel tanks. And anything kind of north of 350 miles seems to be uh, like, wow, that's incredible. But like, I mean, even my 350Z, had something like a 20 gallon tank and I believe I could manage about 500 to 550 miles out of that if I really you know eked it out but that was in the year 2003 those days seem to be gone and the fact that you can get in your family truckster and get 600 miles out of it is great you don't want to live at the fuel station and you may even get you know far more than that if you're just using the electricity for your daily commute so you really won't see a gas station regularly but Toyota gave this thing some power. That's not even full throttle. And this is where I do think that maybe Honda has missed the mark a little bit on some of their cars. Like the CRV Hybrid, great car, enjoyable to drive, handles well, very safe, does the job. But it's got 200 horsepower, 204 horsepower, I think maybe in the hybrid model. This is like 300. And I gotta say, it makes a difference. It makes a difference knowing that I can just jump on throttle and get out of Dodge. I really like that. And this isn't fast. I mean, it's fast for its class, I suppose. But I think this is about where we need to be. It only takes a small amount of awareness to keep traffic flowing nicely. <laughs> like, okay, there's people getting on the highway and they're going slow and that truck is gonna have to bleed off a lot of speed. You know, like, saving fuel is not just about me driving a hybrid or an electric vehicle. Saving fuel is about keeping traffic flowing so that way giant rigs like that 18-wheeler don't have to hit the brakes. So since my sister pretty much never washes this car, I am gonna go at least give it a spray down with some soapy water and pressurized rinse because there's they live in Maine. This car is up in some really salty, nasty stuff and I feel bad just letting it sit for the week. Let's see if this is a lost cause. And we've gotta choose the correct bay because not every one of these bays takes credit cards and I don't carry small bills in cash. Not that I carry large bills in cash either, but. So satisfying. Oh yeah. Do a quick rinse down. This is actually coming off nicely. Oh my God. It just keeps coming.
that's gonna do it for the RAV4 Prime. I'm glad that I got the satisfaction of washing that off. That felt really good. Thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Don't forget to respect the drive. I'm gonna crawl out of here so I don't get the car totaled immediately after washing it. That's always a rookie move. I'm gonna get this back out on the highway for a minute to dry it off.